Hello YouTube, G-Bone Unit here, and oh, let's enjoy some music real quick. Sam is so skinny. All right. Okay, enough of that. Just wanted to have a little bit of fun with that. Um, but I went to the gun show today and um, uh, got a few things. Um, I didn't get everything I wanted. Um, and, of course, the one thing I did not get is probably one of the oddest things to look for at a gun show. I did not get that Dremel tool that I wanted. I mean, it's 25 bucks. And uh, what it's telling me is that um, I didn't even see that vendor at all. With you know, They have certain things uh, that they had. I've seen them at Del Mar every time. And it's telling me that they're probably local. Um, so they just choose not to go to Orange, or maybe they didn't go to Orange for this, for this go-round. I don't know why. But anyway, didn't, didn't get the Dremel tool. But... Um, I went there to get what I wanted, which is ammo, uh, am, ammo, ammo, ammunition. So, anyway, when I got there, any of you guys who are actually local, um, the the Crossroads of the West Gun Show, uh, the Orange County Fairgrounds, that's the biggest one, and man, it was big. It was a lot bigger than Del Mar, and that's the one I usually go to. So, uh, I'm gonna keep going to the Orange County one. Uh, so that one's good. Plus the parking's only five bucks. You know, compare that to Del Mar, nine dollars. I mean, jeez, no, it's. I like the one in Del Mar too, but uh, I'm gonna go there again because it's. I guess it's kind of close, and uh, they probably have that vendor that has the Dremel tools. So, but anyway, so I get there and I was immediately. Um, encountered with people who are Ron Paul supporters and uh, I'm gonna take a close look at this guy because he's you know pretty conservative uh, but the biggest push about this guy is that if you saw this about gun rights he's a big advocate for the Second Amendment so says Godfather of the Tea Party so I'm gonna take a look at this and study it a little bit more so Plus, I got my little sticker here. Um, also got stuff from GunLaw.com. They had they had a lot more pamphlets than this. I just picked three, you know, and uh, just close encounters, gun owners and law enforcement. That's probably going to be really useful. The best of Ask the Gun Lawyer and self defense, use of firearms in your California home. I figured that's going to be really important. So I'm going to read up on this stuff. So pretty good info. Um, also, I wanted to give a little bit of a shout out to jdmachinetech.com. And the only reason is because they answered a bunch of my questions that I had about AR-15s. And they are an AR-15 specialist. And they're local San Diego. So... Thank you, JD Machine. I'm going to visit you guys. Uh, another piece that I got, speaking of JD Tech, I've got this DVD on building your AR-15 from scratch. Um, I don't own an AR-15, and I wanted to learn about it, and I know YouTube's a great resource to look at, uh, and I will continue to look at YouTube for AR-15 info, but uh, I figured, hey, you know, this is an actual instructional DVD, and it was filmed at JD Machine Tech. So uh, I thought that was interesting that these were tied in together. So got myself a video to learn from. Okay, another thing I got 
was I got a couple more magazines for my Ruger 1022 because you know in California we can only have 10 round capacity and these are 10 round magazines and they have magazines that are banana clip but they still only hold 10 so to me it's like what's the point get one that's factory and that's that's and it is flush with the rifle stock. Why do I want all this stuff sticking out? So, uh, and a, another thing that's pretty useful is that notice the size of these things. Still 10 rounds. I bet you, I haven't actually tested it yet, but you know the speed loader pouches for your revolvers? I bet you these things will fit in a speed loader pouch. So, if it does, how useful is that for these things? Cool, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. I thought that was a kind of a neat discovery. Um, I also got a pair of binoculars. Roof prism binoculars. Okay. Very generic looking, but they are 10 by 25. Um, 10 power. Uh, I don't know much about binoculars, only that they see far away and they work for me. So, came with this cheesy, you know, belt, uh, vinyl pouch. It's, you know, it's an okay pouch. I mean, what do you expect? Lens clean, uh, lens cloth. And look how little this is. Pretty small. Here's a water bottle, water bottle for reference. See? Not too bad. And you know, they fold open like so. And they do work pretty well. Um, you know, of course, I tested this at the gun show. I was looking at, you know, menus in the food court far away. And uh, hey, you know, it works pretty well. Um, I, I like them. And they're very compact. I do like how small they are and how light they are. They're pretty light. Um, um, but I, you know, I could do without this flimsy little string. It doesn't immediately look like I can put any kind of um, paracord on here. Could probably figure it out or something, you know. This little noodly string just kind of bothers me. But, you know, I'm glad I got these. You know, very compact. I like them. All right, so, could be part of my bug out bag, okay? Or everyday carry somewhere. Okay. Um, oh, this is kind of cool. This is a pack from Condor Tactical Gear. Okay. Has some, you know, molly strapping back here, or webbing back here. It's got a couple of, of these um, clipped stays for, you know, your backpack or web belt or whatnot. And what this is, you probably already know what it is, but this is cool. Okay. With uh, clip fasteners here. Okay. Velcro to boot. It has Velcro on both sides. One on this side. One on the other side. And it is... It is a pouch for that will hold 25 shotgun shells. Now, how cool is that? And I've already seen one of these fully loaded with shotgun shells at the show. And I'm telling you, it is the coolest thing because it is so compact. When this thing is loaded up, here's a 25th shell, by the way, in case you're wondering. Okay? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, and 25. And then, uh, you know, it folds up real neat, nice, nice and neat, like so. Okay. And that's exactly what it looks like. Just like that nice and compact I mean to me how, how cool is that it's awesome so okay anyway shotgun shell pack all right the next thing I got um, I only got 50 of each but I got 38 special and 357 this is for my um, for my Colt King Cobra 357 Magnum and of course those of you who know you can you can fire 38 specials out of a 357 mag 
Um, uh, I know a lot of times people choose a 38 Special because it's cheaper ammo and you can practice with it. Of course, you must keep in mind that it does not nearly have the kick that a 357 does. I mean, look, it's already a longer shell, okay? More powder, more kick, okay? Right? Right. I think so. Okay. Okay, so they're factory reloads. The reason why I went with these is because I get the factory reloads from the same company that I buy my 40 caliber ammunition from. And I've had very, very good luck um, with the 40 caliber reloads. And I fire that through my SIG Pro. So I am counting on that same type of reliability and satisfaction with 38 specials and 357 mags. So, well, we'll soon see. So I, I only bought 50 of each. Didn't want to get too many of them and go crazy, you know, in case they're too smoky or disastrous or something. So, got that. And speaking of 40, here's more. 500 more. Yet another 500 pack. And, uh, that how beautiful is that oh there is let me huh 40 caliber beautiful my sig pro 2340 loves this stuff love it okay so some of you probably are saying, why do you get so much, you know, why do you get factory reloads? Well, I'm not in law enforcement. I'm not a professional shooter. Uh, this is what I practice with, and this is what I'm decent at. I can hit a 10-inch plate at 7 yards, okay, 21 feet. Um, that's what counts to me. And uh, if I had better ammo, I figure I'd probably have tighter groups, which would be even better. So I practice with this stuff because uh, my, my pistol likes it and it's cheap. And uh, I haven't had any misfires with it. No jams, no stovepipes, no issues. Um, these are very good. I, I'm very happy with this load. Uh, I'm not the type to fire this, you know, a magazine of these and then a magazine of I don't know Winchester you know Fiacci or whatever you call it and fire it and go oh oh I oh I can tell a definite difference this this stuff is not nearly as good as this Remington you know so I, I don't have that feel or know-how so for now this is good and, uh, you know, hey, better to have something than nothing, right? And this is pretty reliable stuff. I'm very happy with the vendor who sells this stuff. So, that's that. And speaking of which, of ammunition that pistols like, my Ruger Mark III Standard got more of these. Remember how I did a review and... I had done about 200, 250 Remington um, that had about three to four misfires. Then I ran a thousand, well, there's 525, so I ran a thousand fifty of these through without a single jam or misfeed. Then I ran the rest of the box of 550 of the Remington and still had misfeeds and misfires. So, fortunately, being that this was the cheapest long rifle ammunition at the gun show at $14 a box, um, I bought four of these. So, one, two, three, four. Very happy with these. Ugh. My Mark III standard is very happy with this ammo likes this stuff so it may not work in yours um, you know I, I 
I've been told and I've heard people say that uh, your firearm will like certain ammunition. My Mark III Standard likes the cheap stuff. It's, uh, I could say that the Mark III Standard is just like me. I like the cheap stuff. I mean, it's, I mean I buy, I'm buying reloads for crying out loud. I got the cheapest 22 long rifle ammo. I like the cheap stuff. Okay. Let me look at this. There are only two of these left. I bought the last two. These are 20 rounds of 7.62 by 54R cartridges. And um, I've already opened one up. Save a little bit of time. This is for my Mosin Nagant. And the reason why I bought these is because uh, if you saw my other video, um, I did buy a spam can of 440 rounds, but I I just can't bring myself to open that can because it's so cool looking. It's from Russia. It's got the Russian writing on it. If I open the can, I'll destroy the can. You know, um, so I was afraid to open it. I didn't want to ruin it, so I ended up buying these. And at five dollars a pack, hey, with all the other you know twenty round boxes, we're like eight dollars and up. Five dollars a pack, made in Russia stuff, um, 150 grain. Hey, the guy said, well, there's no difference between this one and the other one except for the price. It's the other one's four dollars more than this. So I said, sold. Do you have any more? Nope. You got the last two. So I figured I can wait. I have 40 rounds to play around with and to shoot. So um, also. I'm thrilled with this because I'm able to utilize these stripper clips. Stripper clips. Okay, so I'll spare you the the agony of having to <coughs> watch me load up the stripper clips. But I have some loose ones here. I will show you. Oh my gosh! Look at these. Look at these suckers. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. That's an awesome round. Let me show you something. <coughs> You'll notice that when I said the, the cartridge or the caliber, I said 7.62 by 54 R. R means rimmed. R means this lip right here. That means it's a rimmed cartridge. Now, as an example, okay, check out my 40, my 40 caliber round. You see how the end of the casing is flush with the body of the casing? And then now look at this one. The end of the casing is fluted out and it's not flesh and even with the body okay so that means rimmed at least that's what I understand it to be so anyway that's why it's 54 R okay so another thing remember this from my Mosin the Gaunt video this is the pouch like when people buy you know I bought mine from Big Five when people buy these, it comes with the oiler can, couple pouches, bayonet, um, tool pouch. Um, this is a pouch that seems to be made to have the stripper clips and everything inside. This is perfect. This is so cool. Check this out. Okay. Like I said, I've already preloaded this. Check that out. Three stripper clips fitting perfectly inside the pouch. See, it's nice and full here okay and it feeds in just right so that means this pouch holds 15 rounds so this belt pouch holds 30 rounds all together see now here check it out see here they are they all fit in here okay all right, now a bit of terminology that drives me crazy. 
All right, all you gangbangers and gangsters. This is a clip. Not this. Not what you put in your AK-47. Not what you put in your 9mm, your 9, homie. Those are magazines, okay? This is a clip. This is a clip. Or what is properly termed as a stripper clip, okay? Clips hold rounds that load into a magazine, okay? Um, I don't have my Mosin down here to show you, but uh, the Mosin the Gaunt has a fixed magazine attached to the rifle. The clip will feed that magazine and load it, okay? So I know that some of you really appreciate that because uh, I personally just, it turns my stomach when I hear people talking about, yeah, I loaded my, loaded the clip of my Glock and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, Glocks don't have clips. What, what are you, that's telling you that there is someone who does not know a thing about firearms. These are clips, guys. Okay. And what you do to load them, um, I saw someone else's video on, you know, people say, you know, push them in. And from what I heard, the easiest way, you know, I guess it depends on your own experience, is you pull up the round like so, and you force them in like that. Pow, pop them in. I think Iraq Veteran 888 is the one who had that demonstration, and you know, he, hey, he was very quick. I mean, I'm not gonna doubt that. He had that, whoosh, I mean, he had his Mosins, you know, loaded up quickly. But um, anyway, when you load up the clips with these rounds, they fit in here just perfectly. So, so let me put them in here for you. See that? Man, it's like it's made for it, right? And then you just fasten the nice leather strap and there you go see pretty cool I mean I mean if you don't have these stripper clips they, they were kind of hard for me to find at the gun show um, so I know a lot of people just just they just take their rounds and just you know just drop them in like so so you know I'm figuring that it's not a big deal but when it comes to reloading of course, you're going to be going one by one by one doing this method as opposed to pulling out a stripper clip full of rounds and shoving them in. So, anyway, hey, you know, this is it's pretty cool. It, it makes this pouch much more cool because it holds stripper clips of ammo so much nicer. So, anyway, that's it for my... Oh, I also got a backpack, okay? is a single strap backpack that enables me to put it over my shoulder like this or like so and it, it does have a a belt here I'm not gonna adjust it but this goes all the this would go around my waist like so I'm not going to demonstrate that, but it's pretty nice. It's got some molly webbing here, a clip I have no idea what it's for, um, adjustable straps. It's got some strap stays here. Um, also has a strap stay here as well. I don't know where it's. Oh, there. Okay. It's got more molly webbing here on the side. And it has a netted pouch here, which looks to be something for a water bottle. It may or may not be. Who knows? So. Also. Um, it's got molly webbing here. Oh, by the way, this is by Everest. And it's got a 
you know, D ring here, or an O ring, whatever you want to call it. Uh, pretty big, pretty big one here. Not too bad. And um, I, I still have to figure out what this is. I mean, it's got Molly webbing here, but this will come off, folds out. Okay, it doesn't seem to have a real purpose here except to cover this. I don't know. And then these strappy things here. I'm not sure. Maybe to secure things. But here's a netted pouch here. Quick access stuff here. It's got one pocket here. Okay. It's the outermost pocket. Closest to this, this netted pocket. So pretty sizable. Not too bad. Okay. Second pocket here. Runs the length here. And this looks to be the bigger compartment right here. This one has some depth to it. So, comes out like so. Okay. It's pretty nice. Not too bad. And yet a third pocket right here. Third compartment, I should say. And it looks like it holds just your, your more flat things here. But it runs the whole length, the whole length of this pack, so, so that's it for pockets that I can see. So I'll figure out all the strappy stuff later, but that's this, so pretty, I, I just needed a smaller pack to, you know, to carry quick, everyday carry type of stuff um, that I can just throw on my bike or carry around easily and look, you know, not look like I'm going to the mountains. So that's my other pack that I have upstairs, my everyday, my bug out bag. But uh, this is, you know, smallish and it's conservative. It's black. It's not, you know, camouflage. I, I would like to camouflage, but have to get something black and non, you know, non-conspicuous. So, so there you have it. So anyway, I hope that, um, hope that was informative for you. And if you do have a gun show that goes to your area, I strongly suggest that you go. Save up some money and uh, just go make it worth your while and get stuff, you know. You know, it hurts you in the pocketbook, but in the long run, it's better to get your ammunition at a gun show. Uh, if you, you know, buy a little bit maybe to, to, so that you can trust your supplier, I guess. Uh, I trust the supplier who sold me, you know, these 40s for my Sig Pro. I mean, it's my Sig Pro loves this stuff. So, anyway, that should be it and uh hope that you guys continue to watch. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video. Take care.